Hello and welcome. I'm Saeed from StoryPlanet.net. Dive right into the essence of the most captivating books without reading them cover to cover. Whether you're on the go, at the gym, or just relaxing at home, we offer you a unique and enriching listening experience. Today, we are exploring the book Extreme Ownership, a creation by Jocko Willink and Leif Babin. Extreme Ownership 2015 explores the leadership techniques employed by Navy SEAL team commanders. This summary delves into the demanding and life-threatening situations faced by Navy SEALs and how their skills can be translated into the business world. Before we delve into these revelations, it's interesting to note that the authors were Navy SEAL officers during the Battle of Ramadi in Iraq. They led a special operations unit that became the most decorated in the Iraq War. Currently, they operate a leadership consulting firm, providing guidance to business leaders on establishing exceptional teams. With six key ideas to unveil, brace yourself for a deep dive into this captivating book on storyplaned.net. To start, the text encourages individuals to adopt a mindset of extreme ownership in their leadership role. This means taking full responsibility and accountability for their actions and decisions. The focus is on personal growth and considering the benefits of adopting this mindset. This text discusses the extreme nature of leadership in securing the city of Ramadi during the Iraq War. It highlights the insights of two Navy SEAL task unit leaders and how their ability to take charge in battle was crucial for survival. These leadership principles can be applied to any team or organization. Strategies such as cover and move and prioritize and execute are explored, along with the importance of accepting blame, collaboration, and not giving up on challenging missions. Key idea number one. To lead a successful team, one must take responsibility for all of its failures. In 2012, Jocko Willink took responsibility for a friendly fire incident and saved his job as a Navy SEAL. Good leaders take ownership of their mistakes, while bad leaders blame others. In SEAL training, leaders who take responsibility perform the best, while those who refuse to do so fail their missions. A leader's attitude is passed on to their subordinates, affecting the effectiveness of the team. When leaders take total responsibility, accountability and initiative spread throughout the chain of command. Key idea number two, understanding the importance of your mission is crucial for successful execution. The author recounts an experience when military commander Willink questioned a mission that involved working with poorly trained and disloyal Iraqi soldiers. However, he refrained from voicing his criticism to his team until he understood the strategic purpose of the mission which was to eventually withdraw U.S. forces from Iraq. Once he shared this understanding with his team, they were able to commit to the mission and carry it out successfully. The key takeaway is that leaders need to be true believers in the objectives of their team and should seek to understand the strategic goals behind orders, even if they initially seem questionable. Key idea number three. View your allies as a support system rather than competitors. The author shares an experience from Iraq where his SEAL team had to risk walking through enemy territory without backup. He later realizes that there was another SEAL team nearby that could have provided support, but he had failed to ask for help. This highlights the importance of the cover and move tactic, where all elements of a team work together to achieve the overall mission. In a business context, this applies to different teams within an organization supporting each other and recognizing that the competition comes from external sources, not internal. Key idea number four. To remain effective under pressure, it is important to set clear priorities and take action on them. This means identifying the most important tasks or goals and focusing on those. By having a clear understanding of what needs to be done and taking decisive action, one can navigate through stressful situations and maintain effectiveness. In a life or death situation, the leader must stay calm and prioritize the most important tasks. This principle, called prioritize and execute, helps leaders make decisions under pressure. The leader should first assess the situation, communicate the top priority to the team, seek input from key leaders, and focus resources on executing the plan. 
As priorities shift, the leader should communicate the changes to the team. This approach can also be beneficial in business situations. Key idea number five, to achieve success, it is crucial to thoroughly identify and address potential risks in advance. The text emphasizes the importance of comprehensive planning and risk management in leadership. It recounts a situation where a SEAL commander had already factored in potential risks in a rescue operation, allowing the mission to proceed despite new intel about explosives and machine guns. The lesson is that leaders should always generate detailed plans to identify and mitigate known risks, increasing the chances of success and preparedness for unforeseen events. Good leaders focus on controlling risks that can be controlled while acknowledging that some risks will always exist. Key idea number six. If you find yourself resenting interference from your superiors, it is essential to focus on providing them with the necessary information. During their time in Iraq, Babine and Willink learned that taking responsibility for providing detailed updates to their commanding officer was crucial. They realized that their higher-ups weren't psychic and were only asking for information they hadn't provided. This lesson taught them that leaders need to take initiative in providing critical information to their bosses and maintain good relationships. A good leader pushes awareness of the situation up and down the chain of command and influences everyone around them. In conclusion, the key message in this book is that leaders need to take ownership of their team and its work including both successes and failures. The book suggests decentralizing command to effectively manage large teams, breaking them down into smaller sub-teams with designated leaders. These leaders should understand the overall mission and goal and be empowered to make decisions. The book recommends further reading The Way of the Seal by Mark Devine, which provides principles for cultivating mental toughness. Thank you for listening to this summary. If you enjoyed this exploration, we invite you to discover other fascinating books on StoryPlanet.net. Don't wait any longer. A multitude of books, stories and knowledge await you there. See you soon on StoryPlanet.net.